Tilo, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK, man. Right behind me, you see it. Just in case, the warning. Twitch.com is where you can catch a live stream, man. Usernames at the bottom, and we do got Patreon Monday through Sunday. Premier League highlights, UK movies, UK series that we can't put on YouTube. This is Can't Pay, We'll Take It Away, Season 5, Episode 29. We almost done. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Minimal policy. During the first half of 2017, county court judgments against individuals rose to the highest level seen in over a decade. Nearly 600,000 debt judgments were issued, with the average amount standing at over £1,500. Over £900 million worth of county court judgments were issued against consumers in the first half of 2017. Dang. That's a lot. That's a big number, buddy. See, this is why I can't pause this show no more. Look at this. It's ridiculous. High Court Enforcement Agents Gareth Short and Mitch Starr are in Woolacombe, North Devon. Yeah. They have a writ to collect a debt of more than £8,000 owed to a supplier of windows and doors. We never We're going to visit Mr. R. Bauer now, mate. A balance of £8,006.27. Down by the seaside. seaside. It appears that the debtor, Robert Bower, ordered new French doors, but was dissatisfied with the quality of the product. Nice. He refused to pay the claimant's invoice and was then taken to court. Here we go. And lost. Mr. Bower lost the case, and now he must pay the money he owes in full today. Oh, get back here, okay? Hello. Oh, so Mr. Bower, is it? Probably still no, got the window. She's, she's working, yeah? Every yeah, yeah. I believe she's away of... Oh, nice. Is she? Yeah. Okay. Don't have a key for the property, mate, by any chance, Joe? No, I don't. The agents know that Mr. Bower is listed on the electoral roll at this address. Let's have a look. So with the workmen seemingly unable to let them in, they go round to the back of the property to look for another entrance. Gareth finds an open door. Hello? Hey, court enforcement! No, nothing here, is it? What's this? Holiday apartment. Mm. It's clear the flat is a holiday rental, not a family home. But then Gareth spots a door. Can't get in there, the rest of the house for me. The key to the other side. The agents suspect Mr. Bower's house has been split into two flats and that the door is another way in to the main house. Yeah, this is the holiday home side, isn't it? Yeah. Gareth tries to turn the key on the other idea. side of the connecting door. But then the workman appears. What are you doing here? We've got a high court writ to be in the property we have. So we're looking for a Mr. Bower. Wrong place. It's not the wrong place. It's been confirmed that he lives here. Do you have Mr. Bow's number, mate? Any chance? No? Okay, do you have the lady's name at lives here? Do you have her phone number? What are you going to do? If you can help us by any chance and get, get, get us contact with, with the people we're looking for, that'd be fantastic. We can move forward. I guess That's you know him, Mr. Bow. If you know him, you might as well just be honest with us now. Don't tell us about Mr. Bower. Don't tell us the truth. No. If you want to phone Mr. Bower, yeah, we can sort that with him. They always have an inkling if somebody's telling me the truth or not, or if they're hiding the truth. Um, and that's when I'll start to drill down and find ways of getting the truth out of them. This house is um, too nice for you. If that person's not the debtor, then it is obviously a lot harder 
but then it's a bit of a cat and mouse game, to be honest with you. With the man not cooperating, Gareth tries once again to open the connecting door to the upstairs flat. Yeah, we can force, but if we can do without damage our door, we can bet on it. But the key falls out of sight. You can see it then? I don't think I can. It looks like the agents may have to force entry. Try it hard, maybe. But then the workman reappears, and he has someone on the phone. Arboa, the name on the screen. Oh. Robert. Hello. 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 Look for Mr. Boa, please. Uh, what do you want him for? I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. He got new tattoos. Can, you, can, can I speak to him, please? No, he's not here at the moment. All right. So it's now 10 to 12. We'll give you till 12 o'clock for Mr. Boa to make contact with us. If not, potentially assets is going to be removed, all right? Bye now. The woman is the debtor's mother, who appears to be using her son's phone. So you say you didn't know who Mr. Bowe was, mate? Robert. Yeah. And that's his mother. You got Mr. Bowe's number, but you said you don't know who Mr. Bowe is. You know his number? I do now, because you're taking off your phone. And you phoned him three times just now? Last night? Five, oh, six times? Come on. Do you know Mr. Bowe? I do know him briefly, but he's right. back. I don't know. I've heard of him. No, as I say, I know him. You got his number? And of him. You got his number? There's a reason why I'm bald, because I've been around the block a couple of times, and we know when people are lying. I don't like people accusing me of lying. No, if, you, if you tell the truth, I wouldn't have to call you a liar. We just called you out, though, mate, don't we? People tell us all the time that the debtor doesn't live in the house, or the debtor doesn't own the house. But unless you actually give us proof, it's then unfortunately we're going to look to enforce at that property. Just moments after she called, the debtor's mother arrives at the house. Hello. That was Mrs. Bower, is it? Yes. Mrs. Bower. Okay, stop, stop. Okay. Just show you some ID. The High Court Enforcement Agents. Yeah. If you want to get Mr. Bower on the phone, we can deal with him. This is my house. I ordered the windows. It's rubbish windows upstairs. Okay, the issue you got now is if, if unless you're Mr. Bower, which you're obviously not, we can't discuss it with you. Mrs. Bower claims she owns the holiday rental and the flat upstairs. But the agents have no reason to believe Mr. Bower doesn't live here too. Gareth and Mitch need to gain entry into the upstairs flat to look for Mr. Bower and, once and again, any assets belonging to him. The windows are but still then, up. Gareth spots a key on the table. I'll also take that key as well. No, that's mine. I just seize the key to the front door, all right? What we'll do then, we'll start the inventory upstairs. You're not going in the house. Get the police Excuse me. Let's do this right. Move your arm, please. Okay. Move your arm, please. You stop me getting out of the property. Move your arm. Move your arm now. You get the police in. Move your arm. I don't appreciate you stopping me getting out of the property, yeah? I know. You, you get the police in. This, this. You get the police. Go on, you get the I police. Like they're aggressive on, then. today. Doesn't bother us either way. But if you stop, you put your arm across again, it's classed as false imprisonment. So I suggest you stop doing that. This simple job has taken an unexpected Good. turn. With the workman seemingly willing to risk arrest to stop the agents getting upstairs, it will take all of Gareth and Mitch's tenacity to get this case yeah. resolved. That lady pay his bills, so he will do whatever. whatever it takes. High Court Enforcement Agents Gareth Short and Mitch Starr were in Woolacombe, North Devon. I'm not going to let this website stop me from doing my reaction correctly. Every time I want to say something, I guess I have to take the long way to pause this video. But it'll be all right. It will be all right. Don't appreciate you stopping me getting out of the property, yeah? Now, with the workman on the phone to the police, Gareth and Mitch make their way up to the main house. No. Yep. Ah, oh, Mr. Boa. They immediately find a bundle of post addressed to Mr. Boa. It's clear he does live here, after all. Mrs. Bower, do you understand that it's, it's, it's already gone to court? Eh? Do you understand that it's already gone to court and we're here to enforce a high court no verdict? Until you're given a date and time, a hearing by the court, for the, case, the case to be reassessed. Same old story. The high court verdict is still active, it's still enforceable. So we are here to collect the balance in full uh, or remove assets. 
So it's about some French stores, is it? Yeah, it was shoddy. Absolutely mm. shoddy goods, right? Okay. Mrs. Bower appears to want to tell the agents well, her side of the story. But then the police arrive. Do you want me to answer the door, Mrs. Yeah. Bower? Is that all right? I'm not going to lie. This must be an outstanding neighborhood because these police was here in 0.5 seconds. I ain't never seen that in Chicago. I remember one time I got the police called on me and they ain't come for five hours. Five hours passed. <laughs> Do you want me to answer the door, Mrs. Yeah. Bell? Is that all right? Hello. Hello, Hello come Hello. in. Mrs. Bell, where's the police? Are they okay to come in? Yeah. Oh, Molly. All right. Oh. I'm having this food because it's oh, they know. bloody shoddy goods. Unfortunately, Molly, you're... we can't do anything about that. No. Right. I'm explaining to you what these shit and oh, people... Oh, please say that. Ideally, we'd wait here for you to get hold of Robert. We'll deal with him. He's having medical treatment at the moment. I cannot contact him. Okay. The only thing I will say, Molly, is knowing Robert, it will be a lot easier if you spoke to him on the phone because is it? things won't quite uh, probably go smoothly. I couldn't tell you unless I spoke to Robert. Oh, that's ridiculous. We want to speak to Robert and get it resolved that way. No, but it's not to do with Robert. Okay. The judge has finished an asshole. <laughs> Realising the agents aren't well, going Molly. to go away, Mrs. Bower finally gets her son on the phone. This is Robert there, we've got to pay, and then it's all going to be in court. Okay, just here, the, uh, do you want to speak to him? Mr. Bower. Speaking. Okay, your debt currently stands at £8,006.27. Do you want to make payment to me? No, at all. Okay, no, no problem, Mr. Bower. You can do what you like. Okay, no worries then, assets can be removed, right? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, all the best, bye now, bye. With is. Robert refusing to pay, the agents have no option but to start removing goods of value Take belonging to him from the house. We start with the telling everything, but we start counting out. But Mrs. Somebody's Bower has other ideas. Leave that telling Hold on, Leave it. Please, I'll start with doing our job. Oh, I told you that they're acting I'll give the this. door. Oh, you're so evil, you people. We're doing our job, Robert. If Robert dealt with this instead of... I'm not going to lie. I don't see them being evil in this situation. You paid somebody. You still have the material. You're still using it. Whether it's messy quality or not, it's still up and you're using it in your apartment. And you did not pay that man for his hard work. Whether you don't like it or not, you still owe him money. You, It's still up in your house. Like, come on now. Be realistic. Now he that now they evil because he wanted his money and is coming to collect and went to court and went through the proper channel. That ain't that ain't come on now. They're telling us to remove assets. That, come on, if Molly. Robert dealt with this instead of telling us to remove assets, then we wouldn't be in this position. But then the situation becomes too much for Mrs. Bella. I want the doctor. Yeah, get me a doctor. Okay, will you sit down? With Mrs. Bower feeling unwell, the police call for an ambulance. This is the only thing that's You always have to take into account the well-being of that person first. If it's going to affect their health, then uh, we, we need to process that quickly and ease back and step off a little. Fifteen minutes later, paramedics arrive to check up. I ain't gonna lie, rich people know exactly what to do. You better stop. You you better fake dying out here to get them out of your house. That's the only thing that's going to stop them. They'll come back later. It's crazy. I seen it. Remember, we seen it in a case before. Where bro had faked a cardiac arrest or something and got them to leave. And they came back 48 hours later or something. Put on Mrs. Boa. And the agent stopped the enforcement process while she's being cared for. Just pay it and dispute it later. Yeah. Instead of letting your mother go through this. On a daily basis, we see family members or friends getting dragged into somebody else's debt. And I do really sympathize with that person then. It's not their debt. They're not responsible for paying it. But we do see it on a daily basis where people try to offload it and let somebody else deal with the debt, which uh, is a bit of a two-edged sword, to be honest with you. Three and a half hours after the agents first arrived at the property, Robert Bower finally comes home. 
All right, mate. Right. I don't know about your job to do. I understand. It's nothing, that. nothing personal, mate. It's just ridiculous how it comes from 1800 with French doors. We can't even shut them. They're all because it was false. They admitted it in court, but the judge didn't like me because I'm outspoken and gave it to mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So then we started to appeal, and I can't do it. You need somebody pretty clued up. Yeah. Well, you should have shut up in court. <laughs> Paul, I'm talking about I'm outspoken. You was in there talking too damn much. That's what it was. So next time you know, be quiet or get an appeal. What you're doing. You know, to do the right thing. I can't do it. I'm bloody illiterate. Despite the family's dispute with the claimant, the writ must be enforced today. So Gareth and really Mitch continue to remove goods from the house. What's that, Andrew Quidsworth? <laughs> But now, Mrs. Boer seems to be feeling better. And after a drawn-out stalemate, she now seems keen to bring the situation to a close. My bag's in the car again. Right, I'll get it. She gives the agents Robert's card to pay the debt off in full. I ain't gonna lie, that lady is in good... I mean... Despite what happened with the ambulance, she walking, she talking, and her son looked kind of old, so I know she's a little older. But shes I would say she looks good for whatever age she is. She's in good health. Thank you very much. Yeah. Over 1,800 pounds of 10 grand or more. You know, this is just bloody Robert. ridiculous. Robert. I understand you. What do you want oh, now? You know, I'm trying to put your pin in the press screen for you, please, mate. Do it because I, I don't even know. I've never done it in my life. Let me hold I don't do any paperwork. That's why she got the paperwork done. Okay, mate, no worries. So he's just rich? No I'm problem. Dumb. I'm a for that, sir. Not dumb, but... After like, four hours at the property, the case has finally been resolved. Robbery. 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 Yeah. Make sure you look after your mother, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Family. Right, thanks very much. She's a good one, yeah? <laughs> 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 Robert ain't trying to hear this. Thanks both. Thanks. Cheers. <laughs> it's been a tricky case for the agents. When you just pay it, get it done and say, Mama, I look after you. We'll go back to court. Well, hey. Well done, mate. Well, top, well, top work, I was. Yeah. Why don't he get his We deserve that. Yeah, definitely. Don't mind. Pissing me off. A recent survey has revealed that nearly 50% of Every time, uh... landlords had a tenant evicted from their property in the last three years because they weren't paying their rent. It was rough. Last year, over a... Let me tell you why it was so rough in America, because all the prices to places went down during COVID and a little bit after COVID, and then it just went up randomly, like in 2000 and... 23, I want to say. Every price just went back to normal. And people struggled. <laughs> a quarter of private landlords experienced rent arrears. I know this is like 2017 or something. In 2016, private landlords in the UK were owned, owed nearly 5 billion in rent arrears. 9 a.m. High Court Enforcement Agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor ah. are in Forest Fields, Nottingham, to carry out an eviction. Right, Vic, where are we off to, Paul? It's a position order for a property. Oh, lovely. I'm sure there's a story behind it. There always is a story behind a position order. Right, which one is it? Here we go. Here it is. Tenant Emmanuel Oyabidejo has fallen behind on his rent. When the landlord decided to refurbish the house, Mr Oyabidejo's lease wasn't renewed. Right, let's go. Notice of eviction was sent from the county court, but Mr. Oyabadejo has remained at the property. The case was then escalated to the High Court, and now he must leave the house today. Hello there, mate. You okay? Morning. Morning. My name is Mr. Victor, my High Court Enforcement Agent. This is my colleague, Mr. McCracken. Got an order for possession here for this property today, sir. Possession for property? Yeah. yeah. That's your copy? You will have uh, an hour to pack your bags now. You can come back for your belongings. Excuse me. 
um, you can't come in. No, no, I've got a right here to say that I can come in. Yeah, you, you have to let me talk to my landlord and everything. You don't have the right to just come no, in. No, no, it's a possession. Sir, it's a possession order from the court. Yeah. Right? Okay, but I'm still, I'm, I have my legal rights. Of course, okay? but I'm going to explain so the process you. can't here. come in and take in possession. No, I'm not taking yeah, your stuff. I'll go to the people who I signed contract with and we will discuss. Sir, sir. There it is. Sir, hang on. Unless you want to rough things up. Mr. Oyabadejo refuses to let Vic and Stewart in. This is wrong. It's not your place anymore. Who's, whose place is the it? Bro said, unless you want to rough things up, Stewart instantly got quiet. I didn't hear nothing from Stewart after that yet. To let Vic and Stewart in. This is wrong. It's not your place anymore. Who's, whose place is The court it? has decided that, sir. The agents need to make their authority clear. The court Where's the court? The... I don't know anything it, it, about it. The... I don't know. You better not play with him. That's, he got African strength. You better slow up. He do something. To make their authority it. clear. The court Where's the, the court? I don't know anything it, 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 about it. I'll show you. The, it says there, writ of possession. Yeah. Right? Let me explain okay. to you the process. That's because what I you have legal right. You can't keep of course. Out. You need yeah. to let me speak. All yeah. right? You got and seven that's, days that's to come you. back to for your possessions. Today you need to pack a bag with stuff you're going to need for the next few days. Yep, but the landlord can't evict me. That's what I'm telling you. Uh, I know sir, my rights. Yes, I'm a tenant. Sure. No, no way. Okay, but yes, I'm, 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 I'm not. I'm sir, really getting pissed off. No, don't okay, push sir. me. Sir. You're on my property. Mr. Emmanuel. I am legally blinded to be in this property. Enough, don't bullshit me. You can't fuck me over. What people do need to realize is when we get there with a possession order, they're going to go on the day. It doesn't matter what your behavior is. You're going to have to call the police for this one. Mr. Oliver Candy is not going. He's, He's not having or What this. you throw at us, it is reality. And we're not there to listen to your excuses because it's going to pass that stage. Mr. Oyabadejo finally lets the agents. Mr. Oliver Jeju, he, he really talking like he's been paying rent too. Brother, you ain't paid rent. Not only did you not get your contract renewed to be there, you haven't been paying the rent. We talking about this property. I am legally bonded from how? It's in. Mr. Emmanuel. Mr. Emmanuel. Yeah. Is there any anyone else in the property? No one in this property but me. But it seems Mr. Oyabadejo isn't backing down. I have rights. I'll go to the court with them. I will check. The person does not have rights. To do what he's doing. You, you, the second we enter the property, so your lease comes to an end. So your rights now give you seven days to come back and collect the rest of your goods. Legally, you won't be able to return to this property today. If you do force entry, it's a criminal offence then, sir. Where am I going? You don't understand. Now, you you do officer. Just... They will put you up in emergency accommodation, right? Basically, you're going to show the council now you're homeless. I want, I want to do that. Take your bag with you because you're not coming back here tonight. That I can guarantee you. I'm going to contest it. Mm. it. Go and contest it, sir. It's not going to change our day. It's not going to change our day, sir. No. <laughs> with Mr. Oya Badejo still refusing to leave, Stuart gives him an ultimatum. I'm going to give you two choices, okay? What? What? I'm not going to lie. If this was my job and I had to do this, the moment he came to the door and told me, we are going to get roughed up, I would have just called the police because I know you was going to get... Like, I'm not even going to go back and forth. <laughs> I let me call somebody that got a little bit more authority. Somebody you might want to listen to. Leave. Stuart gives him an ultimatum. I'm going to give you two choices, okay? What's, what's you can either leave peacefully now yeah. or I'll phone the police, phone the police and they will have you removed. That's what okay? I want to do so that the okay. police can know I'm contracted to Okay. You. Stuart gets the police on the phone. Police, please. You're in my bedroom. Hello, I'm a high court enforcement agent executing a writ of possession and I need immediate police assistance, please, because the defendant's like refusing to leave the property. Like you're being misinformed and that's what I want to contest. I'm sure you can hear it, officer. Yeah. Let me contest my rights, that's what I'm saying. Whilst the agents wait for the police, Stuart goes downstairs to update the letting agent who's just arrived. I will let y'all know some Africans, at least in Chicago, the Africans in Chicago, they are prideful people. You're not going to tell them nothing. They are never wrong. <laughs> never. And I'm 52% Nigerian, so at the end of the day, I feel like I can speak on it. I ain't never met none of my African family, but nevertheless, 
prideful people. The police, Stuart goes downstairs to oh. update the letting agent who's just arrived outside. Are you Good death. morning, you okay? How long has he been here? About four years. Okay, no, he's been paying his rent. No, on and off, on and off. <laughs> on and off, on and off, yeah. So what's he planning to do with the property? Fully refurbished, yeah, refurbished student student. Ah, right, okay. With Mr. Oyabadejo's time to pack almost up, Stuart heads back upstairs to check on progress. He's, he's trying to get possession, but he's still contracting. But it's clear he still Broken has no intention of leaving. There's a writ in your name mm -hmm. that says you are now evicted. You now technically are homeless. Right, as of this moment. I don't want sir. to be homeless. Right. That's why I'm talking Nobody about. wants to be yeah, homeless, exactly. sir. 20 minutes later, the police arrive. Do you know why these chaps are here? I just has, has it been explained to you? Yeah. Do you understand yeah. what's happening? Do you want to try and get some stuff together then while we're here? Uh, yeah. The outcome of this is that obviously you're going to have to leave. Period. That's With the police now present, Mr. Oyabadejo finally accepts the reality of the situation. When the tenant thinks that... On I wouldn't even went back and forth, I promise you. I'm telling y'all when I would have called the police if I was doing this line of work and I was, you know what I'm saying? I would have walked in, but he would have said, do you want to get roughed up? I would have, 999, hello, we have a <laughs> person here, we're doing an eviction. I, I, I don't got time, can y'all come on? Come on through with it, please. He talking about getting roughed up, and I don't want to get roughed up, so... I don't want to waste my time, so just... The reality of the situation. When the tenant thinks that on the day we do the possession, they can give us 110 reasons why they should be staying and not be evicted. The police are always helpful because if someone is just not playing ball with you and is trying everything to obstruct you from doing your duty, they normally the voice of reason. With Mr. Oyabadejo finally out of the house, the lettings agents take a look around the property. It's a nice bike. And it soon becomes clear there's more to this story than meets the eye. Don't look that bad. So we've got water down here. So it's been leaking for a while. But the landlord's paying 400 quid a month in utilities. And the only, when he was paying his rent, it was only paying six pound a week. We've found that he was leaving the front door open um, so that people could just come and go as they please. The rooms that were locked had been forced open. There was black bags where one of his friends had moved in. With the keys yeah, handed over, the eviction is complete. Is that in? Is that sorted? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right, guys, we'll leave you to it. We'll leave you to it. Oh. Pleasure as always, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you later. Happy client, eh? Vic and Stewart secured a peaceful eviction against. They was trying to get us. I had to pause the whole video. According to a recent report by a leading UK financial corporation, the value of unpaid invoices written off by small businesses has risen by more than 70% in just one year alone. With the average amount now standing at over £20,000, companies are forced to spend more than £2 billion annually trying to recover outstanding payments. Nearly 650,000 small and medium-sized businesses in the UK experience late payments. W High Court Enforcement Agents Gareth Short and Mitch Starr are in Yeovil, Somerset. Why do these guys they have get a writ to shot? collect a debt of almost two thousand pounds owed to a home improvement supplier. Where are we going, mate? On our way to Yeovil. Visit a guy called Tim Goslin. Anybody who comes out and does work, and the work is still there, and you complain about it, and the work is still there, and you don't return the work, you need to get them. You, you're gonna lose in court. Like you do, you doing something shady. 
So not only have I lost time and and probably that I could be doing another job, I've lost this time, and you won't give me my product back. If it's so bad, then give it back. If the work I'm doing is so terrible, give it back. I don't know if this is the same case, but this is two cases like home improvement wise in a row. Same with, and they both handled by these guys. Right, on the way to Yeovil, visit a guy called Tim Goslin. He was just shy of two grand. The debtor, Tim Gosling, purchased bad. new doors for the front of his home, doors but again. failed to pay the invoice. Again? Oh, about, uh, the claimant escalated the case to the High Court, and now Mr. Gosling must pay in full today in either cash or goods. It's a nice door, too. Tally's on. It looks like someone's at home. But with no answer at the door, Mitch and Gareth check the back of the house. They knew y'all coming. Finding an open back door, the agents make peaceful entry. Hello. This that's the funniest part. Hello. To me. Hey, court enforcement agents. And they get to, how'd you get Hello. In? Any joy, mate? No, no, nobody here. Right, let's ring him in, is it? With no one in, Gareth calls the debtor's number. Hello, is that Tim? Who is it, please? I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. Okay. I'm currently inside your living room right now. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we're here with a High Court writ to enforce against you. With regards to money do you owe... Well, I ain't got the money in control. Yeah. I got to fuck all in a minute. Your outstanding balance at the moment is £1,906.07. Well, that's fine, but... Give me a call within the next 10 minutes, anybody. Yeah, okay, we'll do. Cheers, bye. 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 While the agents wait to see if Mr. Gosling can raise payment, they start an inventory of assets that could be seized if he's unsuccessful. It's not a lot here, though, is it? Oh, you are. Someone coming by me. But then a man arrives. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm I'm looking for. Don't live here. Okay. Right. Who, who are you, mate? Who am I? This is my mum's house. Okay. My okay. mother's kicked him out. Tim's not even on the tenancy here. Right. Nothing in this house is his. The man says the debtor was in a relationship with his mother. But he claims they're now separated, and Mr. Gosling no longer lives at... I can see why he came in with that energy there. He's a son trying to protect his mom. Bro talking about some they not together no more. He left my mom. Everybody's a little hurt. Everybody's a little tender still over the breakup. Yeah, I get it. You're doing the right thing, superhero, son. Any son would do that in the same situation. But how did you know? Who called you? But he claims they're now separated, and Mr. Gosling no longer lives at the property. Do you think it'd be worth you lines. giving him a call, mate, and having a chat with him yourself? Oh, I was just with him when he was on the phone to you. Tell him do you want to ask him to pop down? He will. Uh -huh. yeah, Perfect. Go and get him, man. Yeah. Don't be shit empty enough to know. But as this is the address for Mr. Gosling stated on the High Court writ, the well, agents have the right to investigate further. There's so many lies. And Mitch being told. immediately spots something. Invoice for a washing machine. So he's had a washing machine delivered here today. The invoice is in Mr. Gosling's name. So he's bought a washing machine for a house he doesn't live in. Cool. Gareth and Mitch are suspicious that Mr. Gosling might still live in the house after all. A few minutes later, Mr. Gosling arrives. Let's go and have a chat, mate. Come in, bro. Yeah. All right, Tim. Not really. No better days, have you? Well, not better days. Just show us some ID now. Well. So, unfortunately, Tim, are you with a high court writ to enforce against you? There's no point in me saying I'll keep trying because I've got no money to turn to to get the money. That it seems man. Mr. Gosling can't pay the almost £2,000 he owes. Gareth needs to make the consequences of non-payment clear. We're commanded to seize and remove assets if the debt's not paid. Yeah, but obviously this is the last thing we want to do. I've got a furnished flat the other side of town. On going saga, my missus, my ex-missus now. If you walk around the house, there's nothing in mind here at all. But then Mitch shows him the paperwork they found earlier. Can you explain why we still get a mail today in your name, mate? 
If you're not living in this well, property. I'm happy because it was redirected. So when, when did you move out? I moved out yesterday. June was the first yesterday. Dang, okay. Mr. Gosling's story appears to back up his former stepson's claims. But the agents can still remove any goods left in the house belonging to him to offset the debt. Can you prove ownership of every single asset within the property? Oh, no, I won't have any receipts because none of it's new furniture. You've probably got another 10 minutes. I can't pay, and it's not my assets, as you want to call it. You need to make an effort now, Tim, to pay this debt. I'm not fucking make an effort. You don't seem to fucking understand it, there we go. <laughs> With a deadline set, Mr. Gosling goes outside to try again to raise some cash. But it's clear. I'm not gonna lie, bro is overly frustrated. I'm already knowing. He's going through a breakup, probably with a woman that he's been with for a very long time, because clearly him, the stepson and him are in business together. I'd be frustrated too. Do y'all the last people I want to see? Oh, fucking absolute joke. With a deadline set, Mr. Gosling goes outside to try again to raise some cash. But it's clear this won't be an easy task. I have nowhere to fucking turn to. How many more fucking times? I'm getting a bit angry about this now. If I was as desperate as you, I'd keep trying. Defendants who bury their heads and uh, don't make an effort to pay their debts do really frustrate me. Ultimately, if we deal with a matter face on, it's probably going to be a lot easier for yourself. Right. With the clock ticking, Gareth checks on progress. So can you pay me right now, Tim? Still no, isn't it? I know that. Every one of his questions, isn't it? But Mr. Gosling's former stepson, James, is trying to help. Right, Jack? Yeah. Yeah, um, not really. Is there any way you can uh, lend me a thousand pounds? I can pay it on Friday. Mm -hmm. we, won't be, we, we, won't be, we won't be on the way to Friday, mate. James it's gets straight now, back on the phone. Fucking bailiffs at mother's house about to empty the place unless I pay him 1900 quid. Come on, get you a thousand pounds now. You're halfway there, then, mate. Pen can be made over the phone, mate. Yeah. James has managed to raise a thousand pounds towards Mr. Gosling's debt. Brilliant. Okay, mate, we'll, uh, we'll authorize that for you now. I'll give you a call back confirmation, all right? There's still an outstanding amount of £900. But seeing the effort James is putting in to helping the debtor, Gareth decides to give him some extra time. Well, give another five minutes, then, boys. Yeah, we've, we've dragged our heels as much as possible now. Oh, OK. You well, probably going to piss me off. Sorry? But you began to piss me off a bit, really. OK. I'm fucking trying. This is probably the most lenient I've ever been on a job because your son is trying his best to get all of the money. Oh, it's not very common that you see Kids. a younger family yeah. member bailing out an older family member, but it does happen. And to me, a younger and, family member bailing and out... And not to mention, that's his stepson. They ain't even related by blood, but I'm sure it's been a long time. So, like, you got a real love for him. Like, like they are blood. Like, it is dad, father. Out an older dad. family member, but it does happen. And to me, it doesn't really paint a very good picture of, of them when they should really be a role model. Gareth and Mitch have been at the house for an hour. With the second deadline now passed, Gareth's patience is running out. If Mr. Gosling can't pay, the agents have no choice but to remove assets to cover the debt. They turn their attention to his work van, and Mitch calls for a recovery vehicle. Oh yeah, can I have a truck, please? We've got a small van to go, yeah. That's Fantastic, thank you very much. Okay, you've got about 20 minutes before the truck turns up for the vehicle, mate, all right? With the recovery vehicle on its way, Gareth has to make it clear that the extra fees incurred have increased the remaining balance. So we need another £1,500, Tim, to stop us from removing his vehicle. You might think I'm thick, but I'm fucking not. I'm not saying you're thick, it's the last thing I said. I'm trying to sort quite a few things out here. Okay. I'm trying to stop the tech with and bands. But the prospect of actually losing the van finally prompts Mr. Gosling to try one more time to get some help. Yeah, With the I do, mate. Yeah. Right, okay. Full, full bands, 1,500. All right. Yeah, okay, cheers, mate. I appreciate that. A friend offers him a lifeline. It's he? Who's coming down now? Brilliant. Who, who, who's coming, mate? Mate, Brilliant. Going right. to pay the remaining balance for you, is he? Oh, yeah. There we go, mate. We got there, haven't we? I knew you added a new Tim. I always believed in you, mate. 
See? Never doubted you once. That appears Moments later, are. Mr. Gosling's friend arrives. Hey, mate, you okay? Look like he got money. So the remaining balance, Tim, is £1,536.47. pence. The friend pays the remaining balance in full. That's more like it. <laughs> I wish I had a friend like you. Yeah. I got him instead. Yeah. Yeah. Thank very much, sir. <laughs> is it all done now? Territory. Yep, it's all done now, mate. He's not for it. Thanks to his friend and James, Mr. Gosling's debt is now cleared. Job done. Nothing personal, Tim, but I hope I don't see you again. Well, I don't think he passes again either, really, in fairness to you. Nothing personal. Nothing personal. <laughs> The agent's perseverance has paid off. Job and done. breathe. It's the result, mate. Top job, brother. Nevertheless, though, like, when you gotta become annoying to get the job done and just pester and pester and pester. I don't know how they do this job still, but it is entertaining to watch. But still, I, it couldn't be me, man. Go, brother. I still like to put myself in their shoes. Recent research has revealed that the number of tickets issued by private parking firms over the first quarter of the last financial year has risen by over 60. This really touches a nerve. Two days ago, I got a $278 ticket. Now, don't get me wrong, it was my fault, but damn, 278? Y'all gave me the max fine possible for parking in that handicapped spot. My leg happened to hurt that day. I was trying to, you know what I'm saying? I was in and out anyway. Y'all ain't had to do me like that. Percent. A leading motoring organization estimates that 7 million private parking fines will be issued over the course of this year alone. One parking fine is issued one year. That's ridiculous. Get a life. <laughs> it's 8 a.m. And High Court Enforcement Agent Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are in ashton under line Greater Manchester to recover a debt of over £5,000 owed in unpaid parking fines. She needs to pay us £5,142. So regarding? Parking. The parking. Parking, parking. How do you get to that level of parking? The parking company won a county court judgment, but the defendant failed to pay. Let's go. The case was then escalated to the High Court, and the writ commands that the debtor must pay in full today. It's not that cold. Come on. Oh, those toys are frozen. I'm going to be able to use them this morning. There's no answer, so the agents check around the back. Nice little view. Hello. Finding an open door, they make peaceful entry. Hello, is anybody in? Hi, mate, you're... Bro, what is up with y'all? Why do y'all really leave y'all doors open? If you walk around my house right now, every single door is locked and closed, but it's not happening. I'm not doing that, ever. It just seems... They make peaceful entry. Hello, is anybody in? Hi, mate, you're all right. Yeah, yeah. The ship out. Nice, Able to come grab her. <laughs> Cheers, mate, thanks very much. Oh. We've been sent with the High Court writs with regards to parking. Yeah, I paid, I paid one and asked for it back. Oh, no, okay. right, this outstanding balance of £5,142. For what? It must be for parking. Parking. I had one parking ticket. Right. I paid it and I told them they all made the money back because right. I got a free parking there. Right, it the must be something it. else then. I don't even know what it's for. Right. Where's the vehicle? I sold it. You sold it, how long ago? Long time. This is for parking. I've not even had a ladder off of. It appears that the parking fines were incurred in an old vehicle the debtor sold some years ago, and that interest and added fees have now more than tripled what was originally owed. I, I swear on the kids' lives, I've had mm. nothing. I didn't even know about this. Yeah. So how much do I owe? You got letters, man. I've got to pay five thousand pounds today. Well, as I said, I need to see how much you can raise. We need to work with you as well. Anyone you can ring or. 
Just try and get something. While the debtor tries to raise some funds, the agents look around the house for any assets they could seize. There doesn't appear to be much of value. But then Stuart spots some car keys. The car. Oh, there's another key here as well. Great thing about doing this job in this modern age is remote central locking, so let's press a button and see what lights up. Brilliant. Persian. Hi, Nicky, can you someone do HPI for me? Stuart calls the office for a vehicle check on the Vauxhall Astra. Oh, on finance. Finance, yeah. Right, okay, no problem. With the car out of bounds, Stuart heads back inside. Okay. Hello? Hello? Hello there, sir. How can I help? Listen, mate. Yeah. It's pathetic, this. You know, she's a one parent family. She yeah. hasn't got the money. Yeah. Her money's been stopped. And she can prove today that her money has been stopped. Mm. It's a crying out loud to take it to the parking bank. Yeah. I'm on the way. I'm okay, the sir. Right now. No problem. See you shortly. Bye. With the debtor's brother on his way and no assets to take, it will take all the agent's negotiating skills to get this case resolved. Here they go with a commercial break. I knew it was coming. Just the yeah. yeah. After he was called. No, she's a one parent family. She yeah. hasn't got the money. Now, ten minutes after he was called, her brother arrives. Hi, mate. You're all right. Yeah. And he wants answers. So, come on. What are you going to take? You gave it time to raise some funds. You're not having the problem that I just bought. You're not having that. Ideally, we don't want to take anything. We've just got them in this house. It's that he's a cook. It appears that the debtor and her four children have only recently moved into this house after some tough times. She's come out of a, a hor horrendous marriage and come into a new marriage and tried to sort herself out with the kids and she's done brilliant to get where she is. Yeah. You know, I'd believe you me, if I could tell you one half of what she's gone through in the last, you know, three years, right. you know, you'd be like, wow. But she's back on her feet and she's done it, but she's done it herself. And then she gets this. That's good. Like, it's just wrong. Good for Absolutely her. wrong. Mm. So wrong. Despite the debtor's situation, the agents are duty bound to get a result for the claimant. The debtor's do That's how I felt when I got the three hundred dollar parking ticket. I couldn't believe it. Like I'm doing so well, my money management skills are through the roof. Uh, my credit score was going up, and boom! Now I got to put this on a credit card. That's insane. I got to pay off a credit card all the way, then put this on a credit card. It's like the six hundred dollar spin. God damn it! <laughs> Three steps forward and four steps back. Is daughter damn. arrives to help. Get a result for the claimant. The debtor's daughter arrives to help. Sit down, love. With what? You got no more money. I haven't got nothing. I'm clearly saying she's got no money. It's heartbreaking in a way that other family members are dragged into a situation, but that's what debt does. Debt follows you around, it drags family members in, it affects other people, not just the people that we're after. Sometimes they have to get involved to try and resolve the situation. It can make people worry and through no fault of their own, it just means that they're involved whether they like it or not. With the whole family getting involved, Stuart and Vic want to get this case resolved quickly. But with no assets to seize and payment in full out Looks of the like question, Stuart's case. only option is to see whether the claimant will accept a payment plan. We basically feed the information back and then they decide what they want us to do. But for them to accept a payment plan, they're going to want something up front. It's as simple as that. You know, well, three hundred quite be enough. Three hundred and then... Yeah. How okay. Many? Well, but what we'll do is, them. what we'll do is, we'll speak to the claimant now. Okay. Let's say the claimant agrees to it. If they pay three hundred and then hundred pound a month. Yeah. It's a parking yeah. ticket. Keeps the stuff. She's got children. She can't have no TVs or anything, can she? And if it comes to it, I'll just have to help out you. Well, we pay fifty. Okay, fifty. Vic calls the office to see whether the offer of a three hundred pound down payment is acceptable to the claimant. 
there's nothing here. I mean, you know the cars on finance. That there's, uh, it's, it's, it's a three-bedroom house and there's six people living inside, to give you an idea. So they're not, they're not rolling in it. There's no Rolexes. There's no, no whatsoever. Going to give us a bell back. All the agents can do now is wait. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I know. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Waiting for a call back. I only did, we did with our office, they phone the claimants. And then explain to them, look, and there's no assets. Seconds, they're going to do it. Yeah. They no have assets. no choice. Yeah. Six people living in a three-bedroom house. It's the best offer on the table. Unfortunately, every circumstance is different, and if people don't have the means to pay, this will have an impact on the whole family life. I do have sympathy with, with, with defendants that are really, really struggling. Um, and that's why we try and work with them as best as we can. Five minutes later, the office called back. Hello? Yeah? Okay, that's fine. Brilliant. Okay, it's thank okay, you. Right? Cheers, bye. 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 Right, they've accepted it, right? There's a condition, though. And the condition review. is, in review. three to six months' time, they're going to review it. Figure. With the offer accepted, the debtor pays the agents £300 and agrees to a repayment plan of £100 a month to pay back the balance of her £5,000 debt. Just try your best. If you, can't, if you can't make it, phone us. You know what I mean? We'd rather speak to you on the phone than having to oh, come no. back. The case is resolved for now. All right, guys. All right. See you later. But if the debtor defaults on her repayments, the agents I will be back. The problem is absolutely will. no assets. Massive debt, and uh, the claimant has accepted a payment plan. So I just hope, fingers crossed, for that family that she manages to stick to this agreement. Yeah. Well, but there we go. It's not a wake up call most people want, but. Nobody wants. It is what it is. Accommodations is not bad. The debtor took her case back to the high court and the judgment was set aside and payment was within the nice. And Calm Pay will be back at the same time that's next week. Lie, man. That's a great outcome. Because it's probably in her husband's name. Like, who knows, man? Leave a like, comment.